What I remember is having one beer and then going to the bathroom. And then after that, I'd say I remember sitting down and things were really kind of blurry. And I felt a grab on me. It was a friend. I knew the person. Things led to another and found myself in this situation I did not want to be in. I remember us talking and then me being laid down and it got a little fuzzy after that. He basically just darted out of my apartment and I was completely naked. Then after that, I was kind of afraid of everybody for a while. So a lot of people get confused with the term sexual assault. So sexual assault is the penetration of any object or body part from one person to another. But also what counts within sexual assault and sexual violence can be sexual harassment, uh, could be molestation, groping of the body. I think a lot of times when it comes to sexual assault cases, men think it's not a big deal. A lot of men, especially like early 20s, they don't view sex as seriously as women do, and so like having sex or like sexual like acts are not as big of a deal to them. Women are kind of like ob objectified a lot in the workplace. I mean, just out and about. I mean, you see it. I mean, literally, this is like day to day for me. This is every single day. So if it's not on social media, what I get on the trains or buses is, damn, baby, mm, look at that pretty face. Yeah, I'd like to see that next to me. What? You'll have men push up on women, touch them and grope them, say sexual things like in their ear. People don't view it as sexual assault, it's because it's not quote unquote rape. So one of the biggest things I focus on and I feel is the true prevention of sexual assault is violence education. But then the biggest thing is teaching consent. To me, consent means being a fully willing participant. Just because you don't say no, you have to take into account the fact that because a person can't say no, that doesn't mean that it's okay. Someone can't give a consent if they're drunk. So that person has to be functioning. It has to be a functioning yes or no. I think people think once they get the green light, then they have to go through with it. And that's not true. You can say stop at any time. So the Illinois definition of consent is a freely given agreement. It must be, I want to do this, I'm excited to do this, not I'm being peer pressured. I'm drunk, somebody put something in my drink. So really understanding that freely given is really important when it comes to consent. If we teach a lot of young people the true definition of consent and how to know if someone is capable of giving you consent, a lot of people will be more aware when situations like that happen. I was a women's rights activist, president of our club on campus, and I participated in Take Back the Nights, a lot of rallies, but I slowly started to come to terms that I was a survivor myself. My assault was one of my best friends, and we had both broken up with our significant others. We had started kind of hanging out more, talking to each other, maybe a little cuddling on the couch here and there. I was found myself in this situation I did not want to be in where I remember him on top of me and I remember thinking, what is going on? And I remember being shocked. I just, as people say, I let it happen because I was scared. And this is another thing too that, that people don't sometimes understand unless you've experienced it, is that when we are put in a traumatic situation, we think we're gonna do something, right? We know what we should do, but our bodies don't always function that way. In my first year of college at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I was originally majoring in pre-med biology, there was another student that I met in the library one day, and we just quickly became friends. He was an engineering student, and I didn't do very well in mathematics, and he was great in math, so I really didn't see a problem going to his place to study. We studied a little bit, but we mostly were having a good time. Before we got there, he had bought some wine coolers. 
it was not long after I took just a couple of sips of these wine coolers that I started to feel strange. It was like I was very, very disoriented. I couldn't really coordinate my movements. And then he, he started pulling me. I wanted him to stop. I'm like, no, no, stop. Like, this, I, I don't feel good. Something's wrong with me. What are you doing? And I started to try to fight him. And I felt like I was caught like in a time warp in slow motion. The number one date rape drug is alcohol. Alcohol, getting someone drunk or putting too much, maybe spike a few more shots in that drink. So they're giving a substance in which the victim physically cannot respond. Mentally, they cannot respond. They might not be there, they might pass out, or they might not remember it afterwards. When I was 18 years old, I had a neighbor that I had a crush on. I'd say he was probably about 23 or four. What I remember is having one beer and then going to the bathroom. And then after that, I'd say I remember sitting down and things were really kind of blurry. And it was this guy that was my neighbor and his friend. He uh, said, are you okay? And the last thing I remember is that, and then I woke up next to him with no clothes on in the morning, completely covered in bruises and very swollen. So then I ended up um, going to the hospital and the nurse had examined me and said that it looked like I'd been brutally gang raped based on my um, doing a rape kit on me. This issue starts way before college. Um, this is something that we teach when I was a little girl and a boy would come up to me and hit me or kick me and people would say, oh, he likes you. We, we teach these things that aggression for boys, for men, is important, it's a, it's a must. You have to man up, be a man, that having sex is a very important thing for men. And so that's why we see a lot in high school and even middle school and junior high into college where we see young boys, young men, forcing, pressuring sex on, on women. I had met this guy that I worked with. He's a lot older than me, so basically he kind of manipulated me um, into like coming over to his house, offered me alcohol, even though I wasn't supposed to have it because I'm not 21, and he knew that. I remember me meeting his roommates, and then I remember him taking me to his room, and I remember us talking, and then me being laid down, and it got a little fuzzy after that. When I woke up the next morning, I was very confused about what happened, and my clothes were, were off, and he wasn't there, and I was very confused, so I basically left. And so I called him, and he was like, well, you said you wanted it, do do do, and I was like, but I was so drunk, like I don't remember anything, and it was like a tug of war back and forth thing, and yeah, eventually I just kind of like, stopped talking to him and tried to deal with it by myself. So. One of the big reasons that sexual assault is so prevalent is for many years no one talked about it. They're gonna say, well, why were you drinking? Why were you this? Why were you that? So I was like, maybe I shouldn't have gone to his place. We did good at the library. I was safe at the library. Why didn't I just stay at the library? The only people that know are my roommates. They were very upset when I told them what happened and they wanted me to like file a police report, but I just, I didn't feel like anyone would believe me. Name six women you know in your life. One of them is the victim of rape. And at first I, you know, I used to say, think like, is that true? Like, do you really know? And 100%, my own grandmother, I didn't know she was a, a victim. My, um, some of my best friends, I didn't know that they were victims. I think a lot of people don't realize that we're someone's daughter, we're someone's mother, like, we have a family too. This is gonna go with her the rest of her life. It derailed my life for a time. It destroyed certain aspirations, certain goals, certain dreams that I had. It affected my relationships, it affected everything. And for a time I was even suicidal. Any woman could be a victim. Again, it, it's not even about the choices you make or the situations you put yourself in. It's about someone doing something to someone else against their will. There are so many myths 
surrounding sexual assault and sexual violence, such as when you hear the word rapist, what's the first thing that comes to mind? We think of male, we think of a lot of times, we think of a minority race, we think of a big, strong uh, man hiding behind a bush. When in reality, 80% of sexual assaults occur between an acquaintance. It was um, a friend. I, know, I knew the person. I actually wasn't even there with him. I was there with other people. Um, his sister is actually who I was there with. When she left, I was getting ready to leave. And then that's when we were talking. Totally not expecting anything, and I was raped by him. I think your adrenaline kicks in and where I'm, I'm trying to fight, 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 he's doing the same thing because I'm fighting, he's fighting. He thought that because we're friends, like this should be okay. Like this is, this is all right, we're friends, I know you, I've known you for you know, a long time and it's okay. relax, relax, you know, the word relax was used a lot. Well, the first time I was ever, I guess you could say violated, I was six years old. One summer we were here and I was asleep and I felt a grab on me. And when I looked, it was my actual male cousin. And it continued for about the next three years. And instead of it just being one male cousin, it ended up becoming two male cousins. Fast forwarded to age 11. This was the worst um, incident of my life because I was tortured, I was raped, I was sexually assaulted every day for four years, from age 11 to 15. And the person who actually did this was my biological father. He made just the craziest threats. If you tell anybody, you'll never see your brothers or sisters again. If you tell anybody, you know, I'll kill this person. If you tell anybody, you know, who's, going, who's to say what's going to happen to you? I mean, it was always, you know, things like that being said. Sexual assault is power-based personal violence. That's when the perpetrator is using power and control over their victim. So at any point in any sort of sexual contact, whether it's holding hands or kissing or it's as extreme as sex, when power is being put on the other person, we are picking up on body cues, on language. And so when we, we're talking about, okay, is this a gray line or not? When we look at most of the cases, it, it's not. He treated me like I was for his usage to take what he wanted to take from me. And I would have, had more respect for him if he asked. If he said, Kelly, I want to have sex with you, would have been a lot more um, respectable. I think people feel the need to be in control of others, and I think it's just completely, you know, taking control of somebody, have complete control over someone in a situation. You have to be aware of who you're around and, and these guys, because they, even though you, you think that they're nice people, you still have to trust your gut. It was not too late at night. I left my apartment and I passed by a bar. I walked by there like every day. And there was a guy outside who I had seen before. We uh, shared a smoke together and, um, you know, just kind of uh, spoke casually. He said, oh, well, um, I'll go to the store with you and I'll, I'll pay for the beer and we can hang out if you want. I said, yeah, sure. We uh, sat in my house and for about 30 minutes, watched some TV and conversed and uh, all of a sudden I felt something against my head and he said, don't effing move, and it was a gun. I was wearing a dress, like a, a zip-up dress in the bag. Um, it was summer, and he removed it um, all while I was at gunpoint. When he was finished, um, he basically just darted out of my apartment and ran down the stairs, and I was completely naked. I was really surprised that there wasn't at least one female officer there. I, I definitely felt a little bit of bias about them both being males. They were like, oh, well, if he had a gun in one hand, how was he able to 
do this this way if you said you were standing like you know and it was making me it seemed like they didn't believe what I was saying. Rape culture is this culture that we live in that promotes victim blaming. It promotes using the abuser. So a few years ago there was a Steubenville case where a girl had been drunk and they took her body around to different parties. They did all these things and so through this whole process the entire town blamed the girl. And so that's an example of a community coming together to support the perpetrator. And it's because we live in this culture where we blame the victim, we say, what was she wearing? What wasn't she doing? Right, we, we perpetrate this, this violence. Society collectively is quick to blame the woman because it's hard for them to fathom, you know, why would a guy just do that? There were times when I tried to tell my friends about things that happened to me and their first questions were about what I did wrong. I told my friends what had happened, where my, one of my closest friends had gotten me drunk, had sex with me, and I was really confused about this. And the first thing that came out of her mouth was, are you sure that's what happened? Are you sure? Would he really do that? You know, every time I tried to tell something, I was always kind of just, just, you know, hush. I was scared at the time. I mean, I was young. I was very scared to say anything because I always felt like, you know, my friend, friends were gonna blame me. Like they were, it's gonna be your fault. For people to say that it's a woman's fault, to me, I completely, totally disagree with that because there are a lot of women who are conservative women. They've been violated, they've been raped. Were they dressed scantily clad? No, but even if they were, who gives the person a right to violate them? They think, you know, you get what you ask for or how she was dressed type thing. It, it doesn't matter if someone lets someone into their home or not. That's not, that's not consenting to to have sex, and it's definitely not consenting to have a gun put to your head. They comment on social media, and I see all those comments where they're like, well, if it really happened, why, why didn't they come forward? If it really happened, why didn't they this? And why didn't they that? And why didn't they? Everyone can have a conversation about what the victim should have done, but they don't know the kind of humiliation and shame that it leaves people with. We don't want to feel helpless. We don't want to feel like um, we did something wrong or we're not right about things because we're taught to be strong and be a leader. It's never your fault, I don't care. It's never your fault. No one, no one has the right to your body besides you. It's important to note that sexual assault is an intersectional issue, that race that your class, your sexual orientation, your gender identity plays a huge role in that too. And so a lot of times victims don't want to come forward because of this rape culture and because of also all of these other personal things that are happening in our lives that it's just, you know, it's something that women deal with. How you dress and how you talk and, and doesn't make it right for anybody to treat you different. It drives me insane when people say, you know, don't wear that and don't look like this and don't talk like that. Women are judged more on how they dress, how they carry themselves. Like there's just so many rules, like a lady should cross her legs, a lady should do this, a lady should do that, a lady doesn't do this, doesn't do that. So whatever bad happens to her, then it's her fault according to society. And it's, it's not true. Start speaking up, like don't accept that. If you know a guy just said something about your behind, you didn't like the way he approached you when he talked about your breasts, say that. If it's wrong to assault someone, you know, as far as battery or hit them or beat them, why is it not wrong to violate someone's body? You know, that you all don't think about it from that perspective, but that's what you're doing. You're robbing them of, of what they have. How does it make sense that, you know, what I'm wearing gives you the right to come at me and, and touch me or do anything you want? I think it's just male privilege, basically. I think men are on this pedestal and they think that they're stronger and better and they can do anything and not get in trouble with it. Society has to get out of this mindset that the woman led the man on and just decided to change her mind. So it's like, who was she to say no? You already said yes, I wanted to do this, and now we're gonna do it because you say yes. You cannot tell me no. Someone has to start speaking out and teaching from our households to the classrooms that this is not okay. Every 98 seconds, another American 
is a victim of sexual assault. So I travel around to schools, uh, universities, I do trainings with parents, with teachers, how to prevent this violence from even starting, from beginning. A lot of people aren't taught respect. And if you're not taught respect and you don't respect yourself, how can you respect anybody else? We have to be a society of um, respecting each other um, and not assuming that things are okay. And I think it starts with, you know, very young ages. You have to let your boys know this is not okay. And you have to let your girls know this is not okay. If your daughter sees another female being disrespected or violated, she needs to learn that that's not okay. There has to be more education and more awareness about this. Like in the schools, and inform kids on how to properly approach women and men, and how to handle situations where you're not sure if this is okay. And so one of the greatest things about Illinois and a lot of movement throughout the United States is something called Aaron's Law. It's a mandate that now public schools have to teach sexual violence prevention from pre-K all the way to 12th grade. Colleges and universities can do a hell of a lot more to create an environment of awareness and create an environment where students will feel more safe to come forward. It's very intimidating when you um, try to file a police report about a man sexually assaulting you and then it's a bunch of men who come and you already feel a little defensive because you feel like they're going to take their side because they're men and they understand the man better and they don't think it's that serious. I think a good start would be just when it's a sexual assault case, it's just having more female police officers on the scene or like talking to the women. One of the most important things that we teach on as advocates is when your family members, when your friends, when people you know come forward and say this is experience, you know, they've experienced this, how do we respond to them? to where they feel comfortable with going to the police, with moving forward with that. So the first thing that I always tell victims and survivors of sexual assault is that it wasn't your fault. This is not your fault. You did nothing wrong. I would tell anyone who has been a victim of sexual assault not to be, that you don't have to continue to be a victim. It's a choice to not be quiet about it. If you're sitting there right now and something has happened to you and you have not told somebody, the number one step right now for you is to tell somebody. Saying it out loud and telling a person is making it real for you. It's not for nothing if you can save a bunch of other people or stop it from happening again. So, and, and there's hope and you can, you can heal from it. The healing process when you talk about it, which I wish I knew, realized that younger, but when you do talk about it, it does get better. And not just for justice, but it's better for their mind so they don't have emotional problems that will affect them in the future. Because a lot of victims don't realize that, that this is something traumatic and no matter how much you don't talk about it, it's not gonna make it go away. It lingers on for your whole life, but you can get better and you do get better if you let yourself. If more women come forth and more men come forth when they're sexually assaulted, I think it will become a chain reaction and they'll encourage someone else to do it and they will inspire someone else to. I feel like society just now started taking sexual assault seriously because a lot of people didn't speak up and I think if more people speak up, like they will be forced to take it seriously and more people will have to be held accountable for their actions.
It's really important to know that sexual assault, um, unfortunately, as a victim, you are a survivor. You lived through something horrific, but it, it continues to follow you. If we can share our story and if we can encourage other victims to come forward, we can give that encouragement, that, that bravery. I had my best friend who actually was the person I told it to in class. If it weren't for her, I don't even know where I would be today. She actually took me by the hand and said, let's go to the guidance counselor right now and we're gonna talk about this. And that day for me was, you know, the day I became, I had a voice. And after I, you know, worked through things on my own, I have met people who have been through similar experiences. And, and I have been open. Now, re more recently, I've been very open about it. And so for myself, I like to give a lot of awareness of in the workplace. Um, things that we can stand up to. If we hear a friend say a rape joke, you never know when there's another survivor standing around you. So saying something, standing up for that. Um, if you do have a flashback or a trigger, you have a bad day at work, it's okay to take a step back, right? And, and give yourself that free time. If you're in a depressive state of mind and you're struggling with something, um, for me, the best thing to do is get outside. Do not stay at home by yourself. If you have someone to call, call them immediately. Tell them to come meet you right away. I started doing a lot of um, meditation and reading and stuff like that to better myself. There are hotlines that can help you through those things. They will help you, they will listen to you, they will guide you, coach you, and give you advice on what to do and how to do it. Because if you keep just consuming and digesting it, it, it literally drives you crazy. You know, to be honest, I'm grateful that I'm still here because I don't even know how many times I've, you know, broken down mentally about this, you know. I don't think people realize, like, it's not just a violation of your body, it's a violation of your mind. The best place to start for looking for resources is RAIN. R-A-I-N-N.org. That is the national hotline. So you can go into their website, type in your address, type in your zip code, and they will connect you with the closest rape crisis center into which then you can call and contact. Also in Illinois, what is so great, that we have ICASA, which is the Illinois Coalition Against Sexual Assault. And that nonprofit organization is kind of the hub for our 29 rape crisis centers throughout Illinois. And the best part about these rape crisis centers, we provide education, awareness, advocacy, hospital. So if you are sexually assaulted and you need to go to the hospital for that rape kit, for your injuries, we have advocates that will meet you at the hospital at no cost. Keep fighting. Um, you know, if you are in a position where you are faced with this, you're approached with this, or you're struggling with this, someone is out there to help you. Don't think that you have to struggle with it on your own. Don't suffer in silence. That's the worst thing you can do. If it's been years, you can still reach out and get that help. You can still go to the police. You can still reach out to an advocate, still get counseling. And so no matter where you are in that realm of when your assault occurred, there's, it's never too late.